is a character sheet. A character sheet allows other people and yourself to know what your character looks like. In the case of Mickey Mouse here, he's got kind of a, I don't know, looks like a little dog toenail <laughs> shape for his body or car, uh, candy corn, circle for the head, ovals for the ears, rubber tubes for the arms. That's really standard in animation. And if you look here, another animation trope or trick, three fingers and a thumb. Why not four? Uh, it takes more time to draw four fingers than it does to draw three. That's literally why they did that. Um, as you take a look over here to the side, you see a character sheet for a more human looking character. So that's probably somewhere around where we're going to be heading. We're going to be making a, uh, a character sheet for the character that you're going to come up with for all your comic book stuff. All right. Uh, character sheets communicate not just to other people how to draw the character, but reminds you what your character looks like. So if you forgot, you got a reminder there. If you have to do an animated piece, you have to keep this in mind. For every one second of film, there are 24 drawings. Wrap your head around that. So when somebody does that, you know, one 1,000, they have to draw the hand here, 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 all the way through, 24. For 10 seconds, it's 240 drawings. Think about that. Oh, right? Minute and a half. Oh my gosh. That's over, you know, it's way over a thousand drawings. So usually an animator doesn't do all those drawings. They do keyframes, like maybe they do this drawing, that part of the drawing, this part of the drawing, that part of the drawing, and then they give it off to other people who are going to be drawing this in between shots. Or if you worked for Disney back in the day and you drew the Jungle Boy, you would draw the Jungle Boy for three years straight. That would be your job. For the three years that they worked on Jungle Boy, you would draw Mowgli every single day for eight to ten hours a day. You got really good at drawing Mowgli, all right? Um, here we see more of an anime styled character sheet. What's interesting to me about this is I can tell what type of program it was animated in because they broke the arm away from the body, which means they probably took this in a computer and cut it here, used something called a bone tool, and then they take and they animate it. <laughs> all right, back to this real quick. Character sheet for which Disney character? Can anybody figure that out? Nobody? Nobody saw that movie? Really? Come on. It's Beauty and the Beast. There you go. Not the, uh, not the live action one. Here's a really nice computer generated uh, character sheet of a guy with a head that's way too big. So I don't know if he's supposed to be a child or uh, you just got big head syndrome. Character sheet for Steven Universe. Character sheet for a chipmunk. Now our character sheet is going to have front view, three quarter view, side view, action poses. And you will have to do expressions for your character. So that's part of the reason we're gonna be doing this figure drawing. Um, this one I think is for a video game. I have no idea what video game this is. But this cat guy gets to hit people with poison fish, soft fish, piranha fish, electric fish, hammer fish, sword fish, blade fish, juggernaut fish. I'm already intrigued. They really had me at, I'm going to get hit with a poison fish. I do like fish. I don't like to eat poison ones. But I'm just intrigued that this man has a whole bushel of fish on his back that he hits people with. Um, our character sheet is probably going to look a little more human like this, um, but maybe not. Maybe it's going to be human with horns or angel wings or mer people feet. Maybe your character is going to be cross between human and animal. This is a leopard tour. It's kind of like a motor tour, but different. All right. What's cool about this is her hairstyle changes and her clothing changes. 
um, which is cool. You can draw your character in different clothing, but we need to know that you're consistent about the face. You can draw your character with different hairstyle. Um, all right, but we're trying to stay consistent about these things. Okay, I'm gonna stop this share real quick. Um, let's go to my camera. No. So I'm gonna teach you a couple things super fast. All right, some of this is gonna be review. You can do this quick review with me if you want to see how fast you are. Hand of the human body rolls out like this, seven and a half heads tall, right? We count down one head, two head, three head, belly button. Three heads to the belly button. One head width to the side is our shoulder. One head below the belly button is our wrist and our crotch. From the belly button down, one, two, three, four and a half. Our feet, all right, four and a half to the feet. Everything else, simple bread rolls. Now there are other, well not everything, four bread rolls above the belly button, two bread rolls below the belly button, teardrop for your biceps till the first split in the rolls. Teardrops to your wrist from the second in the rolls. I'm going to put some potatoes for hands. I'm going to put some big teardrops that cross at the crotch to make the pelvic zone. Boom, boom. Put some calves. My chest, since it's a dude, is going to come from my armpits down to my waist. If it was a lady, it would come teardrops from my neck outward to create the bosom. All right, and I probably would have given her bigger hips. Not everybody has straight hips if they are female. Now, that you all know. Here's the stuff you don't know. This is gonna be good, wait. I'm almost there. Stupid paper is everywhere in my house. All right, actually, you know what, I'm gonna do uh, no, I'll do this one again. All right. So let's say you have an image and you like this pose, but you want it to be your character in this pose. I'm going to take and put my pencil in the direction of his spine. Now I'm about to show you the greatest thing in the history of the world as far as drawing is concerned. Watch this. Ah, hey, that's the exact angle his spine has to be at. Let me look again. Oh, all right. There's his spine. Hey, look, there's the angle of his shoulders. Mr. Velado, that's like cheating. No, it's not. It's called sighting, and it's completely fine to do because artists have been doing it for thousands of years. They grab an angle, they move an angle. Why, that, that seems unrealistic and like some sort of voodoo. Yeah, maybe. Every time you do something cool, somebody's going to tell you, it's, you know, it's a trick. They didn't sing that song. They didn't paint that picture. All right. So from this point, all I have to do, and this head's just kind of in the three-quarter view, so I'm going to put my egg, and not this way, is go back and start to put my soft bread rolls. I'm going to count down to his actual belly button so I don't put my bread rolls in the wrong place. There's four above, two below. Everything else becomes a teardrop. All right. There's my chest. Here's my thighs crossing. He's actually got more thigh coming here. The calf. All right. Now, here's where it gets a little funky. See how this leg looks weird? That's because it's bent back and he's running. Because it's bent back, it does something called foreshortening. In drawing, if something looks weird, no matter what you know about the canon of the human body, draw it weird. Because you're probably right. Like if I did this right now, I said, draw these fingers. You'd be like, they don't even look like fingers. That's because they're foreshortened. They're pointing right at the um, camera. But if you were to draw it, 
you'd have to draw it like that for it to be in that angle. So if his leg going back looks short, stunted, possibly malformed, draw it that way because it was probably right. Now, once you have that pose, you can add whatever you want to it, right? Maybe he's going to be like Hellboy and he's got horns. Or he's got one broken horn, one formed horn. Maybe he is both angel and demon. Maybe he goes with horns and a halo. Maybe he has a jetpack. Maybe he has Buzz Lightyear's wings. To infinity and beyond. Oh my God, so many genres are being crossed here. I don't even know where to go. Um, the thing that you have to do with your figures eventually, give them clothes. We will have no naked superheroes. We will have no invisible superheroes. All right? You could have a Cyclops if you must. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to post an image on my screen once I get out of this camera view. Boom. And you're going to pick the image you like the best. You know what? Let's start. Last time I started with a guy, this time we'll start with a lady. All right. Even though it's a little more complicated. All right. So pick which pose you like the best. Draw the skeleton first. Add the muscles after that. All right. And I'll give you probably about five, six minutes to start, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, I've posted these images and many others in the announcements section of your Canvas for your class. If you're not taking my class and your images are not on there, I suggest that you go to uh, Google Images, type in female poses, superhero poses, action poses, dancer poses, if you want to draw somebody flying, um, even if you're in my class. Maybe the poses I've posted are not what you're looking for. Go to Google Images. Find out which one you like. Do a little bit of a search, a little bit of research, and you can come up with poses that you feel um, best suit your needs. Now, one quick thing. You don't have to draw the entire pose the way it is. So if you think about this, um, you basically can draw 75% of the pose. Maybe you want the arm in a different angle. Draw what you like, put the arm in a different angle. Maybe the leg is in a different angle. Maybe you like the pose, but you wished it was a uh, female. Change up your, uh, your body part. You know, make the muscles a little less... Um, for, uh, large, make the hips curved, add some bosoms, it's going to be a female. If you find a uh, female pose, like the ones we were just looking at, many of those would do well for Spider-Man. Get rid of the hips, get rid of the bosoms, pretty much that would look like Spider-Man then. So once you have that skeleton, what you choose to put on top of it's really up to you. Alright, so be bold, be brave, and have a good time drawing. I will see you later. Bye.